Shine uh, Caregivers, and he is the Vice President of Business Development and Culture at Foundations Health. Uh, besides being a great professional that loves what he does, he's also extremely focused on culture, and he even has a blog on the company website called Bob's Blog. Uh, and it was his work of going back to study to be a CTNA or a CNA in many states um, that inspired me to start profiling frontline workers. And I wanted to also know who was behind Bob's, um, I want to say, time, attention, passion, and giving him the room to develop this type of culture inside of his organization. And that's why we brought on uh, the owner and founder of Foundations Health, Brian Cullerin. Uh, Bob described Brian as a very frontline guy, visionary, and leader who's actively working towards empowering people. Once uh, a once-in-a-lifetime person and also a great mentor in Bob's words. words. Brian started Foundations Health with only two facilities, and now they almost have 50. Uh, Bob, Brian, welcome to the show. And I want to start off uh, with you, um, Bob. Uh, Bob. Uh, why did, why is it important for you to have Brian, uh, today on LTC heroes? Well, he just, he's an inspirational person. He, he's, uh, he takes the back seat with a lot of things. And this is really unusual for him to do this, but I think I just love people to get to know him and, uh, and, uh, see what he's about. He's, he's, uh, he's ins inspiring. Great. I'm excited. So, uh, with with that getting start to get started with icebreakers, Brian, I would like to get to know you a little bit better since I know Bob extremely well. Uh, we've done many many live streams already at this point. To get started, can you tell me one uncommon hobby that you have, Brian? Well, I love uh, jet skiing. I like being on the water. It's uh, it's uh, settles me down quite well. I'm a, I've got a lot of uh, energy, and the water is uh, helpful for me. <laughs> and 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 before we get into kind of what you all are doing unique, um, if you could tell me what you would change about long-term care with a snap of fingers, if you had that magic wand, what would it be? Well, I wish there were, to get in for the right reasons. I mean, um, the seniors in this country, the demographics are coming at us uh, in great volume. We have to have physical plants designed for the new baby boomer population. So... I would like to get rid of a lot of these older buildings with semi-private rooms and start recognizing the fact that great patient care starts with a great physical plant, private rooms, nice rehab space, great equipment for our staff. Great. You know, I wish I could change that sooner. And I would like to, as, as we get into understanding what you all do with your corporate culture at Foundations Health, I want to use as a segue, uh, what, how did Bob's blog come about? Do you remember where you were when Bob came to you and said, hey, I want to be, I want to go study to be a nurse's aide. Uh, I want to work on the front line. I want to volunteer two days a week. Uh, what, what, what were you thinking when your vice president of development came to you and said, I want to start blogging and I want to work on the fr front line? Well, first of all, I empower Bob. He, he's, he's earned the right in my book. He's a very humble and he's got a lot of humility, right? He really wears it on the sleeve. He's not your typical uh, COO. Um, the numbers side of the business didn't interest Bob as much. It was all about culture care. And I really was intrigued when he wanted to become an STNA and get on the front line and really, and he really embraced it. I got so much positive feedback from the, from the uh, facilities when he uh, came and went. In fact, they're calling for him to come make another road trip again. I, 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 can remember when I came across it and f specifically mentioned to Bob, I said, Bob, I want to have you on the podcast and and I want to talk about company culture. And then he brought up the fact that he'd done the the, the blog and I realized it was quite different. Um, he, he immediately said that his inspiration um, has to come with the way you run the organization. If you were to talk about how you run the team, uh, Brian, what is different about your corporate culture at your organization? You know, to put a, to, to summarize that I really believe in the individual. I believe every person has a, something of value to tell me and uh, we can learn from. So I've never been a big fan of the top to down managerial style, the so-called pyramid. In fact, I think the further you get away from the facility, the less connected you are with how to solve a problem. So 
in a nutshell, I'm all about the individual. I like to give them a lot of latitude to make the call. Um, my favorite, I've got so many stories, but I love when staff are empowered to make a decision, good or bad, I support it. And it's great to say yes to somebody and you know, really embrace creativity because our staff have it. If you if you had to put a finger on where you develop this mentality, this more flat horizontal organization, uh, do, is it is it someone in your family? Did you have a business mentor? Is it something that you grew um, to to? Is something you acquired over time? How would you explain that to someone? Well, I think selfishly, it was because uh, when I got us built our first nursing home in the year two thousand. A lot of the big national nursing home chains were in dire strait. They were all a big corporate, multi-state chains. They were they had poor reputations, and they were going out of business. I saw their their uh, organizational charts. They had more middle management people, more corporate overhead, and I didn't see them solving any problems. So my bias against large companies comes from the fact that I saw their end results, and most of the time they did not succeed. You know, they they didn't look at the facility individually. Yeah, and we do we have it at foundations. We understand each of our buildings as an individual entity with individual local relationships. And I think you have to embrace that. I I can remember uh Bob mentioned to me in one of my first chats the kind of the independence and autonomy that that it, each facility has, and that rings true with what with what you're saying. Um Saying, saying now, uh, Bob, how how did you and Brian meet, and and how long did it take for you to believe not only in the mission and vision of Foundation Health, but in the way that um, Brian runs runs the team? It's, it was a uh, this was twenty years ago. Uh, it was they had their second building at Crown Point in here in Columbus, and uh, I was out in South Dakota. Uh, with Good Samaritan Society and wanted to come back to Ohio. And uh, uh, so I flew in for an interview and uh, pretty quickly after uh, I was hired, uh, he come down to visit and uh, you could tell he, uh, you know, did things differently. And he just, he challenged you to, to make this you know, building successful. And uh, uh, we started uh, right away, just uh, challenging things. There was only one other building. <laughs> So uh, there was something they were doing that the other administrator thought we should do, and I didn't really want to do it. And he said, well, do, do your thing then. And so I knew right away, you know, I was going to have the creativity and the freedom to, to make good decisions and to, to challenge things. And so it was, uh, it, it began, you know, that way right from the start. Hmm. Brian, what's your background? How did you get into long-term care? Well, I got into the... Uh... I have an accounting background, but I wasn't a very good student back in, when I got into it. So I kind of fell into long-term care by accident. And uh, I, have, I understood in the early years that the uh, cost reporting process and how to capture revenue, things like how to read a financial statement. And uh, that segued into becoming an operator in the year 2000. Uh, and you and and you grew it really quickly. How how long after you know starting your first and second facility did you think like this was going to be you know a large percentage of your 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 time your entrepreneurship or did it was it a slow process? No, it was and it was probably uh, quicker than it should have been. In hindsight, you know you mature and develop as a professional. And as I look in the year two thousand and twenty, I, I wish there were more barriers to entry. I, I wish the regulators would put more um, uh, thought, thought into issuing provider agreements because a lot of people brag in this industry about the being the biggest and how many facilities do you operate and own. I, very, I find that a very unbecoming uh, fact because every building, is, you're dealing with people's lives. And in the early years, we found a lot of distressed nursing facilities that were going, that were in, going out of business and we would uh, implement our turnaround plan uh, and it was very challenging in the early years. In hindsight, I look at I look at it today, and I'd be far more selective. Some buildings, in fact, should close down in today today's uh, environment. 
I, I know from spending time on your website and spending a lot of time with your right-hand man, uh, Bob, the mission and vision um, of Foundations Health is important. At least it's important to your team. Uh, there's a stereotype that a, a numbers man, an accounting man, uh, might not put that amount of emphasis on culture and and team. How How did you come... How did you come about to becoming a people person when and going against that stereotype that we have at accountants? Well, it's by going to the buildings with the guy with, and meeting my frontline caregivers. When you get out of the uh, corporate office and get away from your computer and quit looking at spreadsheets and budgeting and all the other financial tools that you that are put in place to uh, monitor financial outcomes, if you get to the front line and see it with your own eyes, you realize that if you do the right thing for your staff and they're doing the right thing for the residents, the numbers will take care of themselves. So I put far less focus on financial help in financials than I once did. Hmm. And, and I would, I, I think that it's safe to assume that many CEOs, if they had their vice president of development, um, you know, come to the point to come to, Come to the realization that they're they're less interested in numbers and they're more interested in people. You would either push them into numbers, try to coach them up. Um, do you remember when you said uh, Bob has a unique skill set and I don't have to force him into numbers? He's going to play a very unique role in this organization. Do you do you remember when you felt felt comfortable letting Bob create his own space inside of your organization? Oh, it was a, shortly after hiring him because he's. Uh, how can I put it? Compassionate man. He cares about the right things. The finding a number cruncher is, is quite easy in this industry. It's easy to put a budget together and to set expectations for facilities. Okay. It's often done by people that have never even been in the facility. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Bob has always uh, fought against the corporate uh, oversight of a building. And I, I applaud that a great deal. Bob, I, I I remember in our first chat, you said that you had a lot of leeway to uh, create culture um, in many different ways. And I asked you to send over examples. You sent over your newsletter. I've spent a lot of time on your website. Um, how has your way of creating team and creating culture at Foundations Health changed over time? And how have you evolved as a leader? I mean, for me personally, it's it's been a process of uh, realizing that uh, it's 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 not about you. It's about finding other people that uh, you can surround yourself with and giving them opportunities and, and turning them loose, like Brian did with me. Um, and and I love I love it when we hire when we get the administrator hire right at a building uh, as somebody independent, confident, uh, compassionate, and 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 um, just driven to to uh, provide good care. Uh, it's neat seeing those people succeed and, uh, get, and uh, um, our corporate team are the, finding those people that are there for the right reasons, that they just want to be there to assist the facilities and uh, uh, give them the support they need. Uh, so that's kind of how, for me, I, it's a changed over time that it's, uh, you just have a lot of more people out there doing the, the right things and challenging. I love it when somebody says that ah, that's not or that's a dumb idea or or they want to you know try something different and brian's always been try it i mean what what do we got to lose so mm -hmm. uh we hate having cookie cutter uh, approaches uh to buildings you i was reading through one of your blogs um from bob's blogs or bob's blogs corner and you said you wrote the following it's no longer an option for companies to have a great workplace culture more than ever today's workforce talks about uh, about this just as much as they talk about their compensation. Our company culture has to become an, an obsession of mine. Uh, it's become an obsession of yours, but it hasn't always been easy, I'm, I'm certain. You all have grown from two facilities almost to 60. Brian, what have been the biggest challenges for you over the last uh, 18, 19 years since you, you founded uh, Foundations Health? Well, oftentimes you're de you're dealing with outside forces that want to have a say in how you run your company, and um, you know whether it's the regulators at multiple departments or whether it's your bankers or your landlord, they all have an opinion on how to do the right thing 
And most of it's, you know, from the banking and landlord side, it's financially driven. And there's a definite, and I've, and I've learned that if you don't have that noise in your life, which we don't, now we can put our resources to the frontline caregivers. And guess what? Our outcomes are going to be much better. Our survey process is going to be better. And, but in the early years, we didn't have that. We could, didn't have that uh, same issue. Well, I, I'm definitely going to highlight uh, what you all are doing well with culture. So don't think that I'm um, trying to set you up for any trick questions. But uh, Bob, what's been something that you've tried to do with culture and you haven't perfected or something you did 10 years ago that you wouldn't try today? What's something that maybe, you know, one of our peers in, in a neighboring state is going to do and you're like, mm, it didn't work for us. I don't know necessarily why, um, but you've moved on to try something better. I mean, I, I think back in the early days, it was you did you, you everything ran off of a PPD or, or you, you looked at the numbers a lot and then you would go into a building and make adjustments, uh, especially when we would purchase a new one. Uh, you would go in and, and I, like Brian said, we grew so fast that um, we, we just kind of got a little uh, cocky, I guess, because we, we had good success. But I think more now, especially with uh, uh, the, the employment situation and, and good employees or any you know, good employees are so hard to find. And when you when you've got them, you need to value them. And I think that's the emphasis so much more today. And I, I, I'm glad we saw that before it got this bad, because uh, we we're not everybody's struggling, but we're not as struggling as bad as a lot of people. And I think for us, it's it's our culture that sets us apart from that uh mm. people just they like they gotta like coming to work um uh so uh yeah to me that's that's the one thing i think that we do different than uh we we did way back you know 20 years ago brian i know that bob always has his ear to the ground because I've met already um, six of, of your frontline caregivers. And I know that he is very attentive to the intangibles of what's working. What are the, what are the qualitative, uh, no, sorry, the quantitative things that the two of you and the rest of your leadership staff are looking at uh, in terms of, of, of company culture? Are you looking at retention? Uh, is, is there anything nuanced you're doing? Are you looking at onboarding? Are you doing surveys with your staff more regularly or less regularly or open-ended? Can you tell me a little bit about what you guys look at, 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 at the, especially now that staffing is such a critical issue in long-term care? How are you approaching it potentially differently than your peers? You know, by making them part of the solution. I remember two years ago, just an example, when Bob uh, was doing his STNA work, he was complaining about some of the supplies we were giving our facility. And I said, well, let's change it. And we had a big national distributor doing our supplies and we changed it. And it wasn't coming from Bob. It was coming from a couple of us STNAs that were complaining. And I said, Bob, you realize the STNAs are the ones we're looking to make their jobs just a little bit easier. Give them what they need. They're the experts. So when you, when you treat people, I think with mutual respect, genuinely, not just lip service, uh, they tend to stay. And when you've got a company you know, like ours that are building brand new buildings and showing that commitment that we're in it for the long term, that, that should uh, lend towards job security and give them that peace of mind that not only do we pay well and we have great health care, but man, we really, we treat you like family. You are, you're, you're one of us. Um, and, and before we continue on, I want to thank uh, our sponsor, LTC Heroes, has been backed by one of America's oldest EHR companies, Experience Care, that dates back to 1969 and its origins. Uh, Experience Care just launched a brand new, uh, out of the box, impressive point of care. Go check that out and see what they're doing with their all inclusive suite with fixed assets and financial uh, options as well. Go over to www.experience.care. Bob, you and you and I have chatted a number of times about d different initiatives that you've done, and I know that right now, kind of continuing on with the last topic with related to retention, retention is in the news right now. Uh, there is a lot of talk about the vaccine mandate, so it's very political right now going on. Uh, the the pay is uh, the market is uh, troubling right now. So, 
what what are you planning to do or what are you working on, Bob, right now with staffing and with retention um, and recruiting to make sure that that affects you less than it's affecting the rest of our industry? I mean, one thing, we, I just got off a call about an hour ago. We're getting ready to launch a new app, uh, with a WorkVivo app that uh, we brought to Brian and said, listen, we want to try this app because it's uh, it's employee engagement app and it is phenomenal. Uh, and this was one of our uh, regional operators said, uh, Nick Anderson in a Dayton market, he said, we should, we should look into this. Brian said, let do it. And so we're, it's, it's, uh, the employees will download it. They'll, it'll, uh, they can interact with each other. We can, uh, it, it's, it's all about employee engagement. We can do surveys from it. It just, we're really excited about uh, the app. That's just one thing that we're trying to have a better way of the, at the local buildings, uh, the employees feeling a part of, of the community. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, something we're doing right now. Bob, in, in talking to your frontline staff, they, they are passionate uh, about Foundations Health, but they're really passionate about long-term care. You and I have interviewed uh, cooks and uh, janitors and uh, nurses' aides and RNAs uh, that are really passionate about our, our industry. What are some of the simple things that you think you all are getting right that sometimes the rest of us are overthinking and we're developing, you know, uh, ex, you know, huge spreadsheets and pivots and trying to figure out if people are working too many hours or need a Saturday off or need a pizza party. What's a couple simple things that you think just getting back to first principles thinking works for you all? I mean, to keep it to keep it really simple, I just I, people need to know that, that that they matter, that they that what they do makes a difference. And I think just just saying thank you. I mean, something as simple as that, or just a little bit of recognition um, goes a long ways. And, and just to let them know they're not there just to fill a shift. Uh, they're there and they're part of a, a family and a group and that, that uh, they're, they're loved and appreciated. And I think that, that to me, it, it seems so basic, but um, I think a lot of companies get that wrong. They just, if they treat their employees like employees and not part of the team, and um, I, I, I uh, there's a, a Peter Drucker quote I just love. It says a culture eats uh, strategy for breakfast. And I think if you get the culture right, um, all the planning and strategy and, and all the, the big, you get culture right. And uh, you've got something there that's uh, that, like Brian said, the numbers always take care of themselves. Brian, from a business point of business point of view, uh, if you were to start all over again uh, today, knowing what you do today, um, how would you approach uh, your growth in long-term care? And, and you know, we feel free to take it any direction you want. It could be related to staff, mm -hmm. and it could be related to territorial expansion or the way that you you focus on something with regulation. What would you do differently? I would focus on uh, operating in markets where you can get the great staff. You know, so parts of Ohio that are uh, losing population, the demographics don't look uh, favorable for a long-term business plan. So I would really look at location and I really take a harder look at physical plant. We're a big proponent that we need private rooms. I mean, I'm a, and that's what I've been focusing on over the past number of years. 80% of our rooms are private. I'm pretty proud of that because I think a, the resident um, really enjoys some, being in their own space. So physical plants really important to having a great operational uh, team also. I, hand in hand. I think that the way that at least the way that you've created Bob's um, current job or the way that he spends his time, maybe not the title, but the way that he spends his time would be unique. I, I've spoken to hundreds and hundreds of CEOs um, in the last year, whether it be on the podcast or uh, for marketing efforts. And not everyone has someone who's spending 50% of their time kind of on the floor and interacting and also have that title as business development. Um, do you have anyone, and do you have any other jobs, Brian, inside of your work org chart that might be unique? Maybe not by title, but, but what they focus on? You know, we, we have such, a, I'm so proud of our management team. We have, we build our own facilities. We have a, a maintenance team that's, that's in charge of maintaining, uh, doing a good preventative maintenance on the physical plant. 
Uh, if you don't fix it on the front end, it's going to be very costly on the back end. I'm proud of the fact we have great landscaping for our courtyards. During this COVID experience, I've been, I was just yelling to get our residents out of their room. It was causing, everybody was noticing depression and we were, we were getting conflicting views from the government agencies on what to do about COVID, but at least we were able to, we had a nice courtyard and uh, we have a great, you know, Bob, I don't know where, where, to, where to start and end uh, because every department is really integrated with our nursing, including myself. Bob wore, wore off on me a little bit. I've been going to the facilities firsthand. A couple of weeks ago, I saw one of um, our administrator and she had a bunch of uh, book bags uh, that I noticed. And I asked her, what's that for? And she said, oh, I just took it. I, I'm giving them to all of our nurses because it's back to school uh, week. One less stress that a mom's got to worry about when the kids are going back to school. And I thought that was a really nice touch. And so I said to all Billies, let's mimic that. Hmm. I think those are the, that's exactly right. Those are the actions that I think the, the leaders in the building, they do these things that it's maybe not a separate position or a separate, but uh, just al along the lines of what Brian just said, that we had another facility, the administrator brought the management team in on a, a weekend and they washed the, all the SGNA's cars while they were working. Just uh, just something to show appreciation. And and uh, I think that's, that's the whole part of the culture that, it, it, it doesn't need to necessarily be a, a job title or position, but just the embracing culture and, and it, and it uh, manifests itself in different ways at every building. Bob, uh, are there any other unique ways that Brian um, runs the team that shows up? Are, are your job performances run differently? Are the way that you all uh, track KPIs or OKRs or goals differently? Or the way that you guys communicate inter internally a little bit different? Is there anything that stands out being like, man, if, if, if Brian retires or Brian decides to get out of long-term care, something that you're going to try to uh, have to work hard to make sure that you replace something that he does. I mean, one thing that I can think of right off the top of my head is, you know, most of the facilities, they get their financials every month and they pour through their financials and they spend time dissecting those. Uh, he stopped giving us financials uh, a, a while ago. And I mean, who does that? <laughs> but the, the, he, he monitors it and, and, and it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, that to me, I, you know, what what owner of a company does that? And mm. uh, that I, you, I'll never work for somebody like that uh, ever. Mm. Brian, why did you make that decision? I I will uh, raise my hand and also say that that is unique. <laughs> well, you know, COVID brought out the a bit the best in this industry. It exposed those buildings that weren't prepared for the pandemic. We had a very we were we had our issues, of course, like everybody else did, but we came through it. Um, very well. And it, start, it started with the staff, you know. Uh, financial statements are kind of boring when you're talking about life and death. They really are. We've, are we're, we're stronger than ever financially. And it's a strange. We don't look at PPDs. We don't, you know, I get mad when I see a low PPD. When I see the activity supplies be, that are low. I want those, I want those residents out enjoying life. I, I get mad when I see a, a low food budget because I, I want it to be a dining experience. These poor residents have been trapped in their rooms. You know, they're, they're looking forward to a nice meal. We've really struggled uh, court, from a culture standpoint of giving those residents the freedom that I de that I think they you know deserve versus what the, uh, the uh, federal government's telling us to do. Hmm. In terms of where, where you all are going to be five years, 10 years from now, do you have a sense of where the organization going is going and where 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 long-term care in your state is going we have a very good governor here in ohio that supports long-term care um i i expect them but, but ohio has uh, far too many nursing homes 920 to be exact with an average occupancy of around 70 percent we on the other hand are at about 90 percent occupancy um as we sit here today uh, the future is the future's bright, but we have to focus on quality. That starts with hiring great staff. This we, we talk about staff retention. We're compete. We, you know, we compete against the hospital systems, the home health care. Um, so we know we're in a challenging labor situation. 
So the, be, the my way is to embrace technology and build a great physical plant that to, makes it just a little bit easier for our frontline caregivers. What's your role or how do you balance managing uh, staying on top of regulatory changes, uh, n- not yourself, not being from the clinical side of things. How do you keep yourself? How, how do you make sure that your organization is sustainable in the long term to stay up on top of regulatory changes and anything clinical that you need to make sure that you're, you know, doing with quality assurance? Well, I trust the people I'm hiring. Um, there was a reason I got C to C uh, grades in Bowling Green. And there's a reason that I fell into this industry. Um, I'm not inquisitive to understand all the regulations. I think a lot of them are inconsistent and illogical. So I do trust our clinical team that actually goes to the buildings, works with the DONs and the the team leaders. Um, We have people that actually go to the buildings and and interact. So I, I gotta be, you know, when I retire, this company's gonna keep on going because it's really not about me. It never has been. Most of my employees wouldn't know who I am. And, th- and I say, and I proudly say that because I didn't want it. I don't want this company to be about me. I want it to be about the facility and it turned this pyramid upside down. The corporate office works for the buildings, not the other way around. Hmm. Yeah, but just, just that statement alone is um, unique. I've, as I've mentioned, I've spoken to a lot and uh, a lot of leaders and I haven't heard that uh, come out of a lot of, of people's mouths. In, 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 as, as we start to wrap up, um, I think what I would want to ask you is kind of from the human level, uh, a lot of times CEO probably doesn't uh, get a lot of advice from staff. They might not feel comfortable, might not get a lot of advice mm-hmm. from residents and they don't feel comfortable. But given your role, you like to be a little bit more invisible than the average owner. Can you think back over the last 18 or 19 years of your work in long-term care and either a moment that stood out for you that was a learning moment for you and it affects the way that you lead today or a piece of advice that you've heard someone else giving each other that you're like, man, that's good. And I want to make sure that's part of our pillar. Well, just a variety, you know, in this crazy world we're living in, I'd rather be kind than right. You know what I'm saying? Too many CEOs, look at that. The, the initials themselves are a little bit embarrassing. That assumes that we all have the answers. We know more than the people giving care. We don't. Uh, I like to stay humble. I realize that I'm a very fortunate guy. I got lucky to be in this business. I feel very fortunate. And uh, we don't always have to be the smartest guy in the room. In fact, if you think you're the smartest guy, you're not. Mm -hmm. All right. So, So I'm always listening, not taking things too seriously. Have a little bit of a sense of humor and listen more than you talk. Definitely. Uh, I think we might have lost. Uh, we might have lost Bob, but I want to, you know, wrap it up and say thank you so much, uh, Brian, for joining LTC Heroes. I know that I'll be in touch uh, with Bob again. We have some uh, future uh, live streams that we'll be doing with some other uh, frontline caregivers from your organization and 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 abroad. Thank you for letting. Thank you for giving me part of Bob's workday um, to learn so much about his passion, your guys' or your guys' passion and the frontline uh, workers at your team. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank thank you, you, Peter. Peter, I appreciate your uh, enthusiasm and your voice. Uh, it's much needed in long-term care. Well, I, 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 I was told by uh, my boss to go out and do my certification as a nurse's aide um, in July. And so when I found Bob, I'm like, oh, Bob's like my big brother. So um, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go do that in the next month. And uh, then I'll okay. document some of it with Bob and come back. Thank you both for joining LTC Heroes. Um, and I look forward to talk to you soon. Thank, Thank you. you, Peter.